Ottawa is launching a $500 million fund for youth mental health care as part of its April 2024 budget. Finance Minister Christian Freeland said the fund will support local mental health organizations in providing care to young Canadians in their own communities. We want younger Canadians to have the support they need so that they are set up for success. Because better funding for mental health services means that younger Canadians can get the help they need right when and where they need it most. Yara uh, Sachs is the Minister of Mental Health and Addiction, and she joins me now. Minister, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming in today. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us, David. $500 million over four years to fund a communities-based approach to youth mental health. Why go this route without, rather than topping up uh, transfers to the provinces? So this is such an exciting announcement today, and we really, the, as you mentioned, we have a framework with the bilateral agreements across province and territories, close to $200 billion over the next 10 years which mental health is a key priority and component to those agreements. But we also recognize that community-based organizations really fill the gaps in many communities when it comes to our youth. And we wanted to really narrow in and invest in our young people now in a way that really meets their needs on the ground. In the 2021 campaign, there was a similar promise of 500 million over four years for university. Uh, yeah. Is this Supplementing that idea, replacing that idea, complementing it, how does it fit together? So I would say we're broadening it. So right. as we know, our young people are not only on university campuses and colleges, our young people are in community making other choices in terms of their education or building their careers and their futures. But we wanted to really have an upstream approach that met young people where they are right now to prepare them and set them up for success. So having a community-based approach with local organizations really for us is the best way to make those investments. One of the barriers, it's not just, uh, you know, not just for youth, it's for anybody. There's a shortage of practitioners like there is across all spectrums of the healthcare field. So how does this help get people access to sort of mental health supports and, and, and treatments that they may need when there are these challenges and bottlenecks that already exist in the system? Right. And it's a great question. And that's exactly why we embarked on the bilateral agreements. Um, if we look at them overall, 13 provinces and territories on average, the spending on mental health in those agreements is over 30%. So we know we're already doing a big lift forward when it comes to mental health services across the health systems. But this was an opportunity for us to really zone in on a key area, which was our youth, because this is a generational investment for them. We want to set them up for success going forward. Our young people need the help, especially after the pandemic. Right, but it's got to be backstopped with the human resource capacity, right? So, so how does that fit into this plan? I mean, the provinces would presumably have to hire or these community groups would have to do it or provide like group therapy or individual therapy and counseling sessions. How do you see that this opening up those opportunities and spaces for people? Well, it goes hand in hand. In the bilateral agreements, the investments are really looking at making not just the investments in the services that are provided, but the work, the healthcare workforce that we need. So we're building out that workforce with provinces and territories and then have supplemental service channels through community organizations that will be available. Okay, so, so I know you have those bilateral agreements in place. Uh, Mark Holland, the Minister of Health, I think signed the last one not that long ago. Yeah, all 13, yes. Things are not that great, though, with the provinces uh, right now, uh, in general, when it comes to federal provincial relations. As you've been doing this budget rollout as a government, there's a lot of pushback on housing announcements, barging into their jurisdiction and other things. Where do you see this fitting into that? Are you worried about sort of the, the testier relation on climate, housing, and everything with the various premiers getting in the way of, of, of this launching and being successful? Um, I wouldn't say I see it as a concern. I see this as another opportunity to collaborate with provinces and territories. We know we, we are all serving Canadians at every level of government. Canadians expect us at all levels of government, federal, provincial, and municipal, to invest in them to make sure that they have the services they need, that they have the housing they need, that they have the infrastructure that they need. As a federal government, we've been listening to Canadians and we're making those investments and we have, I have confidence that we will get to where we need to go because Canadians want us to.